you are watching Redicon. Let's move on to D for discs. We will discuss basics of disc radiology, starting from the anatomy and its structure, disc counts, other possible variations with appropriate spine labeling. We will also see spectrum of disc disease such as disc dehydration, disc bulge, disc herniation, and relevant nomenclature. Once the disc has herniated, then we need to review its effects on disc sac and surroundings including a nerve root exit foramina. Not to forget that discs do not herniate only to thecal sac but also can cause herniation into vertebral bodies resulting in Schmoll's nodes. Lastly, disc infection and discitis and its imaging points. Oh well, if you want to understand disc properly, let me take you to your childhood. As a child, my favorite was a center fresh chewing gum called Spout. I just loved it. It had a firm shell with sweet liquid inside. Disc is very similar to that. It has a firm shell called annulus fibrosus and a liquid center called nucleus pulposus. Just like the gum could dry outside without its wrapper and get cracks, disc can also dry up, get tears and cracks known as HIZ or high intensity zones or tears in annulus fibrosis. Next, spine labeling. It is important for various reasons. Any vertebral body or disc pathology is described on the basis of identification and number of vertebrae. It also decides the level of possible intervention such as surgery or injections, in particular nerve root injections. Failure to identify correct levels of vertebral bodies can result in treatment at wrong levels. A common problem in this regards is developmental variations. For this, we need to understand that there are normally 12 thoracic type vertebrae which are attached to the ribs, then 5 lumbar type mobile vertebrae and finally 5 sacral vertebrae which are also fused and fixed. It is possible to have variation in these. Some people can have 4 or 6 lumbar type vertebrae. Most common level for this variation is lumbosacral junction where L5 can be fixed and can become effective S1 or S1 can become mobile and act as L5. These are called lumbosacral transitional vertebrae or LSTV. The best way to identify these is to count from the highest possible vertebra. A gold standard will be having a full body CT and count from first thoracic. It will exclude or confirm other abnormalities such as 13 or 11 pairs of ribs. However, it is only rarely available. A reliable way of identifying LSTV is ileolumbar ligament which is almost always attached to L5 transverse process. Once ileolumbar ligament is identified on axial slices or coronal images, it can be easy to label vertebrae and report discs accordingly. If there is LSTV present, it must be documented in the report. You can see in this example that axial slices show an ileolumbar ligament with graphic representation of the same ligament on coronal skeletal reconstruction. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMAs, please visit www.radicon.org.